Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media. After three months of complete lockdown, June has come as a respite for our economy. Markets have started to open, production is getting back on track, and we are hopeful that Adex will follow us soon. Hoping to leave the worst behind us, we today are launching our new series, Get Set and Grow. And a good start is half done. With me today is one of the tallest global leader of the industry, Mr. Mark Reed, CEO WPP. Welcome to the show, Mark, and thank you so much for doing this for us. Oh, it's a pleasure, Nazir, and thanks very much for having me uh, on your on your program. Thank you. We're so glad that you know to we are starting uh, this show with the leader of your stature, who can guide the industry much better, you know, on how to recover from uh, what we all have gone through in last three weeks, three months. So, uh, my first question is about that. That considering that most markets have started to ease restrictions, yeah. where do you see growth opportunities in the current business scenario? Yeah. So, look, I think what, what we have to understand about what's happened in the last sort of 12 to 14 weeks is really the acceleration of the trends that were taking place, you know, already in the economy, the rapid digitization of industries, the move online, uh, you know, the growth uh, of, you know, the world outside of the United States, you know, even some of the social movements. And I think that COVID has really brought them into stark relief and particularly the digitization of the economy, I'd say, you know, we see statistics, uh, I think in India, the e-commerce sales have grown 4x in some, in some parts. Uh, and, and, and so I have to think about it as an acceleration of trends. And so that's where the growth opportunities come from. It comes from shifting your business online, it comes from growing your e-commerce capability, it comes from communicating, uh, using, using social media. Uh, we've seen the growth of, uh, some of the platforms in India, and India is a really interesting market because you've got both sort of the best of um, the West and some extent the best of the East. You know, I've seen the growth in online payments in India, businesses like Paytm doing extremely well. So I think that's where you look for the growth. You look for the growth uh, in the future. In digital. Because we are going through, yeah. Okay, so in you're digital, saying digital, yeah. digital is, is, is the new uh, main media and uh, COVID has just... Uh, expedite the process of you know we moving towards digital even faster than we were in 2019 so uh, you know in these uh, three months all the whosoever in the agency i've spoken to have been speaking about uh, making recovery plans for the clients so yeah. uh, what according to you uh, is a good recovery plan for a client at this moment what yeah, all I, should I they consider talks, it talks to the it talks to the acceleration of the trends doesn't it because i think you know, at one level, um, you say well, the growth is in digital, but you have to think about what's happening in the economy and the way in which we uh, shop, the way in which we communicate, the way in which we educate our kids, the way we pay. It's hard to think of something in the economy that has not in some way moved much more rapidly online. And that's going to have an impact on jobs. It's going to have an impact on the retail sector. It's going to have an impact on office space, on universities and education on many, many different sectors of the uh, economy. So I think there's two things for clients to think about, you know, when, when they think about their sort of recovery plan, which is both sort of recovery, but also how they renew their business. And we said to clients, you know, there's three phases to this. There's kind of react, what you do in the short term. There's recover, with how do you get back to growth? And then there's, you know, renew. How do you renew your business to be ready for the environment in the future? And, you know, the recovery plans I think are you know are you know really you know more about being in the market you know I think there is a good reason for clients to be in market which is in a period of great change you have to understand what's going on with consumers and how is behavior changing but I think the really fundamental question is how do we how do they renew their businesses and how do we help them do that and I think some of the changes we've made at WPP in terms of bringing together um our sort of agencies like uh, Wonderman and J. Walter Thompson to form Wonderman Thompson and VML YNR, and actually the historic strength of Ogilvy as a brand with a very integrated offer enables us to sort of give clients a range of uh, an integrated solution that's not sort of siloed in analog and digital, but actually enables them to you know really think holistically about how to transform their business and connect with consumers in new ways, which I think ultimately is what they're going to have to do. So Mark, many markets that Groupam uh, operates in, they started to open before India. And uh, yeah. you must have uh, been observing the trends there. 
So what kind of predictions or what kind of suggestions can you give to Indian market? So I think that um, the recovery is, um, I think the recovery is gradual. And I, and I think you have to get very specific about how things recover. You know, ultimately, you know, the recovery is, is based on, you know, what, you know, the economist John Maynard Keynes called animal spirits, you know, or people's, you know, emotions and confidence, you know, are people comfortable going to a restaurant? Are they comfortable walking down the street? You know, are they comfortable leaving their, their house? And, and many people are not, you know, I think at the heart of this is a human tragedy, you know, more than 400,000 people around the world have died of, of coronavirus to date. And that number looks like it's increasing. And while the pandemic is under control in some parts of the world, there's other parts of the world where it's not it's having a very serious impact on, on people's lives. So I think that you know, we really need to think about um, you know, people's sort of emotions, if you like, or emotional state. You know, what we've seen in some markets is some um, you know, aut automotive sales have grown strongly in China as we came out of it, up 20% the first two months in April. And actually some of that's driven by a desire by people not to get back onto public transport, but yeah. to get in their own car. We're seeing the same thing in the US. You know, I speaking to an auto manufacturer um, earlier this week, who said they'd seen sales you know, up 5% in May year on year, and some of that's pent up demand. There's other parts of the economy where you're not going to have that, that level of pent up demand. And I think that it's going to take time for industries like tourism and travel and hospitality to recover and for people in those sectors to go back to work. So I think inevitably, you know, the recovery is going to be gradual. And whilst we might feel that the second quarter of this year has been the toughest quarter, you know, I think questions remain on how quickly we'll come out in in the third and fourth quarter and i'm i'm very much you know people have sort of extremely complicated ways of describing this um i'm sort of in the nike swoosh category you know it, it's going to be a gradual recovery as confidence builds and people gradually get back to work and it's coordinated on a global fashion and you know that's saying that there's not a recurrence in the second half of the year in some form of, of second wave now you know the evidence suggests that that, that may well happen you know, if we don't get a vaccine and, and while there's talk of having a vaccine in September and October, you know, I think that that's, you know, looking on the optimistic side, given, you know, the four to five year time horizon typically taken to generate a vaccine. And I think pharmaceutical companies could be one of the heroes of the situation if they can deliver that in time. So I think people are watching nervously. And, you know, as we think about how we get people from WPP back into the office, um, you know, it's a struggle. You know, I think, you know, we've said to people in London and New York, and I, and I think the same would be true in, in, in Mumbai and, uh, and New Delhi, you know, it's, it's probably going to be, you know, September, October before we have meaningful numbers of people back in the office. And it may well be delayed because at the end of the day, we can do our job uh, remotely or from home. And I think to some extent, it's, it's our responsibility, you know, not to put more people back on public transport, not to put people back in, in densely populated offices to do what we can to help to fight the spread of the virus. But to come back to your original question, look, I think it's a gradual recovery. And, um, but those clients that you know, stay in market and, and look at what's happening in consumer behavior and are ready will be those that do the best. COVID-19 has changed the scenario by 360 degrees. You know, a lot of things have changed. We, have, we all have never worked from home for this long. So uh, how have, have conversations with clients changed post-pandemic? Yeah, I mean, what, what clients say to me is, <clears throat> you know, the work has got, you know, we're working in a more agile way, in a faster way. The work has got quicker. Um, decisions are being made faster. The creative work is just as good, if not better. And I think you hear that, uh, that repeated actually in many service businesses in investment banking, in management consulting, that actually, you know, people have learned that they can work uh, remotely like this. And they've said, you know, let's not go back to the old way of doing things when this finishes. Now, you know, if this carries on very much longer, we'll have forgotten how to do things in the old way by the time we do go back. And I think to some extent, that's sort of going to be the, the progression. You know, people are going to go back to work so gradually that actually many of the ways of working that we've, you know, experienced over the last uh, four months will just be the way in which we do things. You know, I can't imagine, um, you know, flying, you know, overnight to you know, have a client meeting or to go through a review meeting. Um, you know, we have all learned that things can be done, you know, very differently. And that's probably good for, you know, my health and my family life and, and the environment and saving money and a number of other things. 
you know, at the same time, um, you know, much of that has been enabled because we've been in offices for the last you know, 100 years. And so I think there still is a role for the office. It will just change. I do think that people will work from home more in the future. It's the number one question I get what asked on town. I'm, I, this is very specific to your conversations with clients. You know, what kind of uh, problems are they coming with? Or what kind of solutions are they looking for? Uh, where do they want to spend their money now? So what yeah. has uh, changed post-pandemic? I think that I think the conversations with clients are more strategic because they're, answering, they're asking more fundamental questions, which is like, how should I communicate with customers at the moment? Should I communicate with them? You know, what do, what do consumers want to hear? And should we be speaking? And I think that you know, what we said to companies is that you know, actions speak louder than words. But if you are taking the right actions, and I think many companies are, then you should communicate what you're doing to customers. And, and, I, and I think that that's important. And many companies you know, have gone out of the way. You know, we did some work for Colgate in India, um, giving people sort of remote dental consultations. Uh, I think that's a very relevant communication. We've done a lot of work um, promoting the use of masks, you know, the mask force campaign from Ogilvy, the Make Your Own Mask at the Times in India from Wonderman Thompson. And I think those pieces of work show, you know, the role our industry can play. So I think that's one thing the clients are saying. The second thing I think is that those clients that can sell can typically sell through digital channels. And therefore, they're, they're looking for, you know, digital campaigns or campaigns in in digital media and so there's a big shift in that in that direction to uh, to communications closer to you know the purchase point and so those clients are thinking in a fortunate position that they can sell online they're doing it and actually many clients are figuring out how they can get online much more quickly and we had we work with a chain of retailers in the US and developed you know, in two weeks, a whole e-commerce platform for curbside delivery. So you know, there's a lot of innovation taking place. And I think that's the other thing you hear from clients is, you know, let's just try things out because um, you know, what's, the, what's the downside? We all have suffered huge losses and uh, we're cutting costs from wherever we can. In such a scenario, how much will agency business suffer, if at all? Uh, or do you think pandemic will uh, make the role of agencies even more important for clients? Well, yeah, you know, you know, clearly in the short term, you know, our business is going to be impacted and, and you can see that, um, you know, impact in our in our results in the first quarter. We pulled out, you know, what happened in March. And, you know, I think that 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 is a that is a unfortunate reality of, of the situation that, you know, to some extent is um, beyond our control or beyond anyone's control. You know, we are in a fortunate position as WPP and in our industry that we can continue to work. But clearly, uh, budgets are impacted in a number of sectors, you know, much more in hospitality or travel and tourism or luxury than they are in, you know, packaged goods or technology or healthcare. That's about 50% of WPP's business globally. So, you know, I, I think that um, you know, there's going to be an economic impact. And I think that that's going to be, you know, a temporary impact of Q2, Q3. And then the question is, how quickly do we get back to, you know, 2019 levels in our industry. And I think, you know, that's going to take um, a, bit, a bit more time. If I can ask you a question about can line, I mean, uh, the, the yes. can was cancelled uh, last year and now they're starting their, this can traditional thing. Uh, how should uh, the festival change ahead of its return in 2021? Do you, do you think it will be the same the way it was or you, you suggest some changes? So I think, you know, um, you know, we supported the decision by um, the organisers to cancel the festival this year and, and not to try to you know, hold it again in October. And I think that that was the right decision. You know, we are great believers in award shows and in recognition for the award. And I know it's important uh, for the, the creative community. I think it's important that we celebrate the impact that our, that our industry does. You know, clearly, I think when CAN comes back in 2021, it's going to come back in a different form. And I think everyone understands that you know, more elements of it will be online. I don't know that as many people will travel to the south of France as, as, as used to. And we'll probably see, you know, another degree of scaling back of the festival from what, from what we, we saw in the past. I mean, we've also got CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, coming up in, in January. And um, as we start to plan for that, I think it's going to be difficult to see how that's going to take place 
um, really in a, in a major way in January either. And those are sort of the two, I'd say, the two key events or have become the two key events in our industry. One sort of CES, more celebration of technology and its impact on marketing in the world and, and Can Lions, which is a celebration of creativity, uh, which after all, I think is what in a sense WPP is about, the combination of creativity and technology. So, you know, I, I think um, we'll miss Can next week. Um, we have a special edition of uh, WPP TV going out yeah, for an hour a day. Yeah, talk about that. Can. Yeah. So I hope Tell us watch, more I about hope WPP TV. Yeah, so I think, you know, we launched it um, as a way of bringing people together across WPP. Um, it runs for about 45 minutes a day, four days a week, and we feature creative people, uh, some of the work, some of the leaders from around the world. We run one on Monday, sort of timed for Asia, one on Tuesday, timed for Europe, one on Wednesday, timed for the, the United States, and Thursday, timed for Latin America. And, um, you know, it's been a great way of, of bringing people together. Uh, some sort of, you know, some celebrities, some industry figures. Uh, and um, I, I think that, you know, although we're all sort of physically separated, in many ways, we sort of feel digitally more connected than ever before. And um, it's a sort of odd thing about the last, you know, three to four months, isn't it? So this is basically to, you know, uh, boost the morale of the employees, you know, just to make them feel connected. Well, I mean, boosting morale might be going too far, but I think it's about connecting people, about celebrating the work, about bringing people together. Um, Motivating. You know, and highlighting much of what we what much of what we do just just like in a way I guess this series is is for you so I think um, you know there's a massive shift to video isn't there the last three to four months you know Ev everyone you know there's more webinars you know you could spend the whole day on a, on a webinar um, if you had nothing better to do so I'm hoping to um, do with one with you soon if you can take yeah. out some time for us <laughs> okay you want so, to commit um, on air yeah, yeah, we'll, we will we'll, uh, love to uh, do a live thing with you. So uh, we, okay. I, I spoke to Srini uh, during the lockdown and he was, uh, he highlighted how much work WPP agencies were doing despite the lockdown, particularly creative agencies. So uh, what were the operational challenges uh, that uh, most of your agencies faced during these w, uh, times of lockdown? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the irony is the, the, the operational challenges were sort of, I'd say much less than we would have imagined. You know, I think, you know, historically, you know, if you think we were, if you think you did an office move, you might take six months to plan it. You know, suddenly we did an office move over a weekend. And, um, you know, we, we sort of sent everyone home, if that's the right word, or asked people to work from home March 16th, by which time actually many people had locally and already made similar decisions because we'd encouraging people to work from home for some time, but we mandated it. March 16th and I think you know it's gone um, extremely smoothly at one level perhaps that shouldn't surprise us but I think that um, has been good now but I think we have to recognize it's not it's not easy for, for people and for every person you know typically senior people who live in houses with gardens um, that sort of rather enjoyed the last three to four months there's many people who have found it very very difficult you know single parents working parents people living alone you know the, the least uh, the less advantaged in society it's not it's not in any way uh, easy and you know i know that many of our people really do want to come back to the office where to see their friends and to see their colleagues uh, and to be together for that sense of community and so i think that um despite people being you know while, while some people you know never want to go back to work there are many many people that really really do want to go back to work and i think we're going to have to start to soon to think about how we can bring people gradually um, back into the offices, you know, ensuring that they're safe and they can get to the office in the safe way and they're set up in the right way. And it's voluntary, but I think that we can manage all of that. Mark, before we close, what would be your final word for the industry? Uh, an advice or, you know, something that you want uh, us to uh, leave uh, as in thinking uh, mm -hmm. before we wrap up? Look, I think ours is an optimistic industry. It's an industry that's connected to people and to ideas and to the art of the possible. And I think we have to look into, into the, the, you know, the current situation that we find ourselves 
and look for the growth opportunities, look for the things we want to change, look for the, the good in the world and, and, you know, really try to, you know, help our clients get, get through this. You know, we're not on the front line of the response, but I think as an industry, there's many things that we should be proud of in helping, you know, companies and health authorities and organisations, you know, communicate uh, during the pandemic. And I think we need to look at that in the future. I think it's brought, certainly it's brought WPP together as a company in ways we wouldn't have imagined before. And uh, I think that that will be a good thing. And from collaboration, you know, we'll get better results for our clients. And you know, ultimately, you know, we exist to help our clients, you know, to help the people that work for us and help you know, the communities in which we live, you know, and use the, the power of creativity to do that. So, you know, I look to, you know, our creative leaders like Piyush and, and others, you know, really to you know, come up with the ideas and innovation that can help companies succeed and prosper and provide jobs and employment on which, you know, all of our livelihoods depend. Mark, thank you so much for taking out time for us and speaking to us. Uh, there's a lot that a lot of people in India uh, would learn from this in interview and inspire. Thanks again for your time and uh, we wish you all the best. Stay safe. Yeah, well, Thank thanks you. very much for having me. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate the questions and I really appreciate the work that, you know, all of our people do in India and, uh, and our clients for their support. And, you know, I wish our whole industry uh, and everyone in India the best as well. It's a fantastic uh, country and a fantastic econ economic market. And uh, I'm sure we'll all get through this um, and come out the other side in, in a good place. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for speaking. Thank you, Thanks very Thank much. You.